the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hello, welcome. In our previous episode, we looked at the commemoration of the saints and the diptych, in which we asked for the prayers for the departed. In today's episode, we will look at the introduction to the fraction and its beautiful and meaningful prayers. Introduction to the fraction. Abuna starts with the introduction to the fraction prayers by saying, Lead us throughout the way into your kingdom, that is this, so also in all things your great and holy name be glorified, blessed and exalted. In everything honor them, blessed together with Jesus Christ, your beloved Son and the Holy Spirit. He, the priest, asked, for the guidance to the good way that leads him and his congregation towards the heavenly kingdom to dwell with God forever in glorious joy. Also, many were guided to the heavenly kingdom, walking the correct path and adorned with spiritual virtues. This is reason enough for glorifying God, praising him and exalting his name as the Lord Jesus Christ said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hear this prayer, my beloved, and meditate on all these meanings when the priest prays this part of the liturgy, which is full of praise and glorification for the name of the glorified, blessed and honored God, who is most worthy in everything. After the priest completes this prayer, with its beautiful meaning, full of reverence, he crosses his hands and bows his head and moves back to the left of the altar without signing the cross and says, Peace be with you all. Giving peace here means the establishment of grace which we asked for in calling the Holy Spirit and the transubstantiation of the sacraments. This grace is given to partakers of the communion of the holy body and blood of Jesus Christ. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We notice this is the first time the priest says, Peace be with you all, without making the sign of the cross. The reason is because after the dwelling of the Holy Spirit upon the, uh, the mysteries, and the transubstantiation into the holy body and blood of God our Lord, himself is present and the priest is now standing in the presence of the high priest, our beloved Lord Jesus Christ, who himself blesses the congregation. We notice that the statement, peace be with you all, is repeated many times from then on without any signing of the cross. The only permissible signing of the cross after the dwelling of the Holy Spirit are on the mysteries, such as when the sign of the cross is made on the body by the blood and the blood by the body. Respond with the congregation and also with your spirit, requesting God to fill the priest with peace and comfort so that his divine peace may overflow onto you and all others. In this way, problems and disputes will be eliminated from families and individuals and everyone's, as St. Paul said to Timothy, may lead a quiet and peaceful life in godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to acknowledge of the truth. Abuna then continues their prayers by saying, Again, let us give thanks unto God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he also made us worthy now to stand up in this holy place, to lift up our hands and to serve his holy name. Let us also ask him to make us worthy of the communion and partaking of his divine and immortal mysteries. Abuna, he thanks God who made him and his children worthy to stand in the holy presence of God and raise up their hands before God in praise and thanksgiving and prayer. 
He thanks him for his grace by which he made the believers worthy are partaking of the holy body and blood of the Son of God for the healing and redemption of our souls, bodies, and spirits. Then he fervently asked God to make him and his people worthy to partake of the communion of his divine and immortal mysteries, so that the communion does not become a reason for judgment to them if they partake of the mysteries in an unworthy manner. The congregation then respond, Amen. My beloved, recite with the congregation this response, Amen, and give thanks to God for his mercy, asking him to make you worthy for receiving the Holy Communion of these mysteries, so that you may enjoy all their blessings and effects. Abuna then lays down the veils on the altar to the sides of the throne and does not take them into his hands again. He takes the pure body <clears throat> with his right hand and places it on the palm of his left hand. He puts his right index finger on the body, on the right of the spadicorn where the body is broken and says, The holy body. The congregation then kneels and says, we worship your holy body. Note, my brethren, the deacons make sure that the candles are lit during this time so that the holy sacraments are honored and because the candle sheds light on others so they may believe in him. Also, to illuminate the area around the holy body and on the blood, keeping them lit until the end of the fraction. David the psalmist said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Then Abuna dips his index finger into the precious blood, raises his finger slightly while still over the blood and makes the sign of the cross with it above the blood in the chalice, while saying, And the precious blood. The congregation kneels, proclaiming, And your honored blood. That is, we worship your divine honored blood, which was shed on the cross for our salvation. The priest gently shakes his index finger inside the chalice to free it from the blood, taking the utmost care to ensure it does not drip after he takes it out of the chalice. Abona brings the body, which is on his left hand, closer to the chalice, and puts his index finger with the blood on it on the spaddy corn here. Then he lowers his hands over the pattern and does the sign of the cross on the pure body with honored blood. With his index finger on the spaddy corn, he moves his finger upwards and then over back of the body, and then up in front of the body until he reached the spaddy corn again. He then moves his index finger around the body from left to right until he comes back to the spaddy corn, thus forming the sign of the cross. While doing this, he says, of his Christ, the Pantocrator, the Lord, our God. He is signifying the passion of the Lord on the cross and his blood, which was shed from the effects of the nails, lashes, crown of thorns, and stabbing by the spear, which tricked down his holy body at the time of crucifixion until his pure body was covered in blood. The deacon responds, says, Amin, Amin, let us pray. Warning the congregation to pray in the spirit and truth during these holy moments while kneeling down in reverence. When you hear this response, lift your hearts to God, my beloved. Ask Him for a life of repentance and forgiveness of sins and worthiness to partake of the Holy Communion. Ask Him also for all your spiritual needs. The congregation responds by saying, Lord, have mercy. This is said at the appropriate time 
for the whole situation represents the crucifixion of Christ and the shedding of his holy blood for the salvation of the world. This situation presents the climax of divine mercy and love for mankind. Let us grasp this valuable chance to ask mercy from God, for this mercy was granted to us on his crucifixion. The priest then gives peace to the congregation without making the sign of the cross on them, saying, Peace be with you all. Giving peace here has a special significance, for at this moment Christ was crucified, there was great confusion in the world as the sun darkened, the earth quaked, rocks were split, and everyone was in fear and terror. But the priest gives peace to the congregation and comforts their hearts amidst these painful memories and terrifying disturbances. My beloved, make the sign of the cross and accept peace together with the entire congregation from the Lord of Peace himself. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The congregation answers saying, And with your spirit, requesting peace for their father, the priest, so that this peace may overflow to others. This is in accordance with what is mentioned in the apostolic order. If the bishop or priest asks peace for others, he must first have peace or else he, how can he give to others what he does not have? After this, the congregation rise in reverence and submission to the holy divine mysteries present on the altar, things which angels desire to see. Abuna then starts dividing the holy body while saying the fraction. And this, uh, this concludes the introduction to the fraction for today. In our next episode, we will take a look at the prayers of the fraction and see how the holy body is divided. We will also look at the prayers of absolution and submission. Thank you for watching. God bless you and take care.